pattern matching, which will provide more concise syntax for algorithms than you already use today. A very handy feature that C Sharp 7 gives you is patterns, and these provide a simple syntax to test whether an object meets a criteria related to its value or its type. There are currently three pattern matching types, and there will be more pattern types to be introduced in the future. And in this video, we're going to cover constant patterns, type patterns, and var patterns. Constant patterns were introduced prior to C Sharp 6, and something you've seen before, and these effectively test if an input is equal to a particular constant value. And type patterns check if an input has a particular type, and if so, extract the input value into a new variable of that type. And finally, var patterns. These don't perform a conditional match. The purpose of a var pattern is to generate a new variable with the value and type of the input. This will make a lot more sense if you see the code. So let me flip over to Visual Studio, where I'll create a simple console application to demonstrate pattern matching. So here we are over in Visual Studio, where I've created a demo application to demonstrate pattern matching. And in this demo, I'm going to show you type patterns, I'll show you var patterns, and constant patterns. And within constant patterns, there's also is expressions. Before we get started, the premise of this is to do with shapes. So I've created a simple interface called shape, and it has an area function. I've also got an abstract class, which inherits from shape, and it instantiates the property area. And derived from shape, I've got three objects. I've got a triangle, a rectangle, and an unknown shape. And that's it. So with these objects, we're going to show you pattern matching. So the first thing we want to demonstrate are type patterns. So this function here called type patterns calls show area using type, which is this function just below. And I'm going to pass in a rectangle with some dimensions, a couple of triangles, and an unknown. You can see I'm passing in an eye shape, because we don't know what type of shape it is. It could be a rectangle, triangle, unknown. And I'm going to write some dashes on the screen, and immediately we're going to write up to the console the area of the shape. I'm then going to use a switch statement. And this is probably something new that you haven't seen yet. You can have case statements with types and also with a when clause. And what's very important to remember is the order of the switch statement. It's absolutely crucial. And I'm going to show you why. So first off, a shape comes in. And if it's a triangle, it'll match either one of these three case statements. The bottom case statement is a catch-all. Every single type of triangle will be caught by this. However, if this piece of code was at the top, it would catch everything. And in fact, the compiler is intelligent enough to say this has already been handled because this one doesn't have a when, so it would catch everything. So let's put this back down to where it was before. Now, the first one has a when area is less than 10. And the second one has a when area is less than 50. Now, if the when area was less than 50 was first, this one would never get called because this one would always catch it and write at the console, this is a medium triangle, and then exit. And if we quickly run this one, you can see the medium triangle has been called twice for both of them, even when it's a small one. So let me exit out of that and just put these back to how they were. So if I save this and run it again, you can see the rectangle came in first, and it wrote out rectangle and showed the area. The next one, which was the small triangle, because it was less than 10, it wrote out that. Medium triangle was less than 50, so it wrote out that. And then we had a triangle that was larger or equal to 50, because it would have been caught by this one here. And therefore, the triangle T is the catch-all. It catches every other type of triangle. And there was also an unknown type. If you recall up here, we passed in an unknown, which actually doesn't have an area, nothing is set, so it's default to zero, and that's caught by the default in the switch statement at the bottom. Let's close this demo and move on to var patterns. We'll cover type and var patterns in much more detail in the next video, and we'll cover switch statements. So var patterns, we have two triangles, a rectangle, and an unknown. In the previous example, we were using triangles because we knew exactly what type we wanted. When it's a triangle, create a variable called t, 
when that area was less than 50. In VARs, however, we're not using triangles or rectangles, we use VAR. And here we're using case of VAR, give it the variable t, and we're testing is when the t is the area is less than 10, execute this console.write line. And here we're saying when the type name is a triangle, we can execute that name. But we don't actually have to use get type name to know if it's a triangle because we can simply use this function here, which is the catch all for all triangles. We can execute that. But this line here will never be executed. Even though this is a catch all for triangles, this too has caught all the triangles because the when clause says if it's a triangle, execute this line. And finally, for any other type of object like unknown, rectangles, etc., it will execute the case for anything. And here we're saying this could be anything, and we show the area of the object. If you notice, this line is dimmed down, and that's because this code is unreachable. The default will never be executed, and we can actually remove this whole section. And the reason the default won't be used is because the case for anything will catch absolutely everything unless we put like a when close here and then this won't be executed and the default will and you can see they've reversed the highlights so the console.write line is dimmed down and the default is lit up we put something complicated where it has to be evaluated at one time they both light up but by default you'll see the default go dim because it's not executed so you actually don't need this bit of code here so let me run this code, and you can see we are getting an area of a shape. The area of the shape is 3, and it's a smallish shape. Next, we're passing in a triangle, which is actually caught by the next case statement, because the type name is a triangle. The case statement triangle T is never executed, because it's always caught by the one above. The next one is a rectangle, and there isn't a case statement here for a rectangle, so it's caught by the case for anything, and it's saying this could be anything, and the area is 25. And finally, we're passing in an unknown shape, and it was saying that it's caught by the first case statement because the area is less than 10. So let me close this example and move on to the next, which is constant patterns. So here, we're calling the function, and we're passing in a null, triangle, rectangle, and an unknown. This function is using an object so we can demonstrate the use of is. The first thing we're doing is checking to see if the shape is null, which is called a const pattern. Previously, if you want to check if the shape is null, you would have done if shape equals equals null, and then possibly throw an exception. But here, you can use if shape is null, which is called a const pattern. And then in C Sharp 6, you'd have to check if the shape is an I shape, and then you'd cast that shape variable down to a local variable, and then write out the area of that shape. In C Sharp 7, you can skip the cast. And I've said shape is I shape, and given it the variable S. And I've skipped the cast, and it's much more readable. And obviously, if the shape is a rectangle, and give it the variable R, I get the rectangle. So using is, passing in the variable there, either s or r, it skips this cast and makes the code neater and much more readable. So if I run this code, you can see I pass in a null, it says shape is null. Pass in triangle, it says the shape, pass in a rectangle, and it's showing the size of the rectangle, both the old and the new ways. And finally, passing in an unknown, and it shows you the area of the shape. Really quite straightforward. And it's just a really nice, clean way to skip the cast. Let's cancel that and move on to the next example, which is is expressions with patterns. So for this first example, I'm going to call a function print stars one. I'm going to pass in a string five, and then I'm going to pass in an integer five, and that's why I'm using the object o. So the first thing we have to do to check if o is null, which is our const pattern check. And the next is checking to see if O is an integer. But if it's not an integer, we can return. So in this case, we're only looking for integers. And if it is an integer, it's in the variable i, and we can print out five stars. 
So if I let me run this code, and you can see here, we have five stars. We didn't have two sets because the first one was a string. And this line here, we only wanted integers. So it ignored the string. And then when it was an integer, it printed five stars. In the next example, I'm going to pass in 10 and 10, and finally 15, 15. So if you did want to use strings, you can use a pattern and a try method, and they go really well together. First thing you have to do is check to see if O is null. And next, you can say if O is an integer, or if O is a string, and you can pass that string S out into the variable I that was previously declared here. So if it's already an integer, or you can parse it into an integer, print the number of stars I. And that's why we can see two sets there. The same line here can be written out as a switch statement, which is just here. First thing, what we've done is to check if it's a null object, and we do a return. The next case statement is integer i, and if you notice, it flows straight through to the next case statement, which is checking to see if it's a string, when that string can be passed into an integer. And if it can be, both of them, both integer i, when it's a string and can be passed into an integer, we'll use console.writeLine and print the number of stars. So this whole switch statement is the same as this here. It's the same function, just written up differently. It's up to you which one you prefer. I actually prefer the bottom one, but if you Google around and have a look at try methods and patterns that often go well together, you'll often see it just written out like this. But I personally prefer the switch statement. It makes it much more readable, especially if a junior wants to come along and have a look at this code. It's less confusing. And checking the console output, you can see the both output the same. So up to you which one you want to use. You'll see this pattern quite a lot in people's code. So in summary, we saw that there are currently three pattern matching types, and with more to come in the future. And patterns can be used in is expressions and in switch case blocks. And constant patterns test if an input is equal to a particular constant value. And we were checking for is null. And if so, extracts the input value into a new variable of that type. And var patterns generate a new variable with the value and the type of the input. However, the var patterns always match, and you should be very careful with them.